Good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the second uh, Instagram Live uh, videos that we're going to be doing. Um, we'll be doing these uh, fairly often um, throughout the time to keep you uh, entertained, to introduce a lot of people from the boxing world to you that otherwise wouldn't get out to talk to you. Um, so tonight what I'll do is I'll just run through who we've got on tonight to also let you know that we'll be on again this Wednesday at 7 o'clock with an all-female guest list. We've got five female guests all linked with professional boxing from MCs, former world title challengers, debutantes, um, and it's a very, very exciting uh, thing on Wednesday. So make sure you come back in and join us on Wednesday. Now, tonight we've got four special guests, and we're starting off first with uh, Terry Coulter, who is one of the unsung kings of the uh, training regime. We'll talk about Terry, um, and then we're going to move on from Terry to an MC who's fast making his name as one of the best MCs outside the TV industry. That's Mike Connolly. We're going to move from Mike to the new key bomb, Brad Pauls, the man who has got devastating knockout power, was on the verge of an Eng of a English title final eliminator, uh, which would have taken place Friday just gone, but obviously that was scuppered by the uh, the coronavirus. And then finally, we've got the man, the the road warrior, probably one of the best journeymen in the country, Phil Williams, who has a bit of a backstory because he's out now serving on the front line, uh, working on the ambulances as well. So to start with, we're going to try and touch base with uh, Terry. So I'm going to see if Terry's around and we'll bring Terry into the into the thing. Good man, is Terry there? So let's add Wait for Terry to come. Let's hope he joins us. And then we'll chat with Terry about his exciting last few years and his long-standing career where he's developed a lot of champions uh, in the training regime. So we're just waiting for Terry to join us. And uh, I say after Terry, we're going to be jumping straight to... Here he is, the man himself. You could have shaved from me, Phil. What's going on? I oh, can't, Steve. I'm, I'm doing it to wind my wife up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> you can't find you very attractive looking like that, mate. Oh, no. <laughs> So what you've been up to? You, you just in quarantine and just... No, I'm still working, Steve. Are you still going? Okay. Yeah, I drive up in the morning. I'm doing a job on my own, so it, I, I'm, I'm not touching base with anybody, you know? The road's quiet? Well, the road's Lost quiet, you, mate. Oh, the road's yeah. quiet? Yeah, the roads are really quiet, yeah. Yeah, really quiet. Yeah, yeah. So what, so what makes you continue... Mate. I lost well, it, mate. Can you hear me? Yeah, got you now. Yeah, you got. Yes. Yeah, so what? What makes you still want to do it? Oh. To do the grind with the boxes. I mean, you've just been training Jose Lopez for his Southern Area title. What? What still makes you want to do it? What motivates you? I've been doing it since I was nine, and it's a massive part of my life. And I really enjoy it. I love getting, I love seeing talent and getting it out of them, you know? Yeah. No, you've done a good job. I mean, the first time we touched base was when you had Matt McCarthy, wasn't it? And um, I, think, I think I'm right in saying that under you, I don't think Matt lost, did he? No, Matt, Matt's a very talented kid. Uh, really, a, you know, good fighter. Brit British title all day long written over him. But obviously, you know, he didn't feel he was ready to step up when I did. And I thought he was yeah, ready to step and up, what... and he, he, did, he didn't want it, you know. Yeah, so that was that was the end. He hasn't fought for two years, so it looks like he may be at the end now, doesn't it? A lot of boxers when they Shame. That good time, fighter. That's some fun. Yeah, he was. No, he was. I thought he was extremely talented, Matt. And then and obviously we fight... worked together. We... Go on. Every fight he had with me, and and under and under your banner, the improvement showed every time, you know. No, I agree. But then after Matt, we worked together with our friend Waddy Camacho, and uh, I think that, that was, was a, a very it was a very successful time for you. Yeah. I mean, you took him to the Commonwealth title, didn't you? Um, and with Waddy, it's never straightforward, but it was it was exciting when it lasted, didn't it? It was very good. I mean, you've done a great job with him. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you rang me and asked me if I'd be interested, I said yeah. Um, I see. I, I thought there was still mileage in him, as you did, and. We changed a few things, but what is a very, very, very capable fighter. He's very clever, you know, and uh, he's, you know. Uh, 
Hello, mate. You still there? Carry on, mate. Carry on. Yeah, he made a brilliant trainer, Waddy, you know. But I enjoyed my journey with him. Um, we achieved a lot yeah. together. So to have that on my CV is really good, you know, really good. So tell, tell us about when you trained before. Before I knew you, you've obviously been training for many years. And tell us about some of the fighters you've trained and what they achieved before we well, started, I started working together with Matt McCarthy. I started off with Mickey Cantwell about 30 years ago, turned pro with Mickey. Jeez. And uh, as you know, Mickey boxed the world title. Um, I then, uh, I come out of the Fisher originally, in the amateurs. I was junior coach at the Fisher. Then I went pro with Mickey. And we just, we, you know, started from there really. And I've, I've been involved around some good good fighters in my life, you know. Uh, another good fighter, Fran Harding out of Liverpool. Uh, my, good fighter, my, uh, uh, Fran. Uh, Paul Carr. I had Paul Carr as a junior. I took him to his first national title. Well, he was a bag of nerves when I took him. He'd, he'd had four fights or five fights and lost four. He had, had only won one, I think. I took him all the way to the national finals. He went back the following year and won it. And then I went, um, then he turned pro with me. He used to come up once a week with me up the Beckett and the Cooper and train with us. And he was only like 15, 16 like, when I left. And then he, uh, when he wanted to turn pro, he turned pro with me and I put him with Frank Warren. And then, oh, about about three years ago, I ended up doing the corner with him at the Camden oh, really? Centre. So that's a story. Yeah, it's a great story. Yeah. And if you had to know him, Mark, who is the best fighter you've ever trained? The best fighter I've ever trained was a cage fighter called Lee Murray. Uh, mate, that man, if he'd have turned pro, he'd have been something special. You know, he used to spar with Julius Francis, David A, when I had my own gym. Yeah, really good fighter. But, but in boxing... Uh, each, each fighter I've trained have been there for their merits, you know. They've, they've all got their own individual talents. Uh, Martin Welsh took him to the English title. Uh, you know, Waddy, obviously Jose Lopez. Upset for Jose, really. He didn't turn up on the night. He, he's a lot better than that. Um, and if he'd, if he'd applied in the ring that night, what he'd been doing in the gym, he'd be Southern Area champion now. And that's no disrespect to Ian Martel or Graham Everett done a brilliant job come down and beat him but uh, I felt Jose is such a talented kid but he just leaves it in the dressing room he didn't take it in the ring you know but yeah but yeah I've, I've, I've enjoyed enjoying my career I enjoy working with yourselves and your team which is good finish yet no no I could cut you're breaking up I was saying we haven't finished yet we're gonna find you we've got to get you another one we're gonna get you a new <laughs> champion <laughs> well, as you know, Steve, I don't look for fighters. No, I've got no, to no. see something before I take them on. I don't just take them on for it, you know. There, there's got to be something there that I can work with, you know. And I certainly don't do it for the money because there's no money in it, I've got to tell you. And that's the that's strange thing, isn't it? Because trainers, they, most people in boxing don't do it for the money, do they? It's only at the top, No, top, they do it for the level. love, yeah. 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 It's very, yeah. very difficult. I mean, unless you're I mean, Adam Booth or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, so where, so where, so where? I mean, how many more years are you planning to do your painting and your business and that sort of stuff? Is that something you're still going to do for many more years to come? I'm 65 this year, but I can't you stop. You don't look it. I'm, just, I'm, tw don't look it. I'm 21 up in the edge, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I just like, I don't think I could stop, Steve. I just got to keep going, and uh, I love me boxing. I'm really missing it at the minute. Yeah. Um, and I've got my little granddaughter involved in it and she's coming on lovely and it's, it's really good, you know. And yeah. she loves coming down to the gym. She, she said to me, yes, see, granddad, I really miss not going to the gym with you. I said, ah, oh, like, you know, hopefully this will all be done done and dusted soon and we'll all be back to normal, you know. So when's, but, your, gut, when's, your, gut feel, when's your gut feeling that this is open, the gym's open again? What's, what do you feel I don't think? I don't think we'll see boxing until the latter part of this year, beginning next year, mate, to be honest with you. Mm. I really don't. I, 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 yeah, I really, really don't. But uh, you know, where do we go from here? We all, we all. I mean, everybody misses it. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, there's no point doing it until people are safe. It's just you know, it's, it's a sport. At the end of the day, so we just got to listen to the government, listen to whatever they do, the scientists, and then come back when when they're ready. Really, haven't we? We, we can't yeah. do anything about it. So we can't force it. That's for sure. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. So you have to get get you see you have to get we'll have to get you somebody to get back in the gym with mate. So <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, I don't think you're going to let me retire, are you? <laughs> nah, we can't let. We, you're too good. You're too good at what you do to let to let you retire, mate. That's the thing. That's the thing. And I've got to say, you said to me a little while ago about you retiring. I said, no, you're not. If I ain't, you ain't, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Definitely I'm not. Done. I've been I've been at home now in isolation for three weeks. If I had to live like this, it would do my head in. It's in, I mean I have been doing my financial work, but oh my god, I'm not I'm not ready to sit at home every day. Oh my god, no 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 no. Nor no, me, mate. Right. Nor me. It's it's it's, it's, it's just does you nothing, doesn't it? I mean, I, I'm I'm still working at the moment, and uh, I think I've got a couple of days left, and then I've just had a phone call for someone who's got a pub while it's shut, and we're wants oh, me to okay. do a bit of work in there, so. That, that that's cool, you know, but yeah. But as for the boxing, Steve, yeah, I love it. I love doing it. I've been I've been around some good fighters in my day, and I've worked some great trainers. I've learned a lot of a, a lot of people, you know, and you never stop learning in this game. And who's the best trainer that you've come across? Oh, they're, they're, they're each and every person's got their own individualities. I mean, uh, I like Del Granger, good trainer. Peter Sweeney, good trainer. Alan Smith, good trainer. Uh, I've uh. And I've, 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 I've had the pleasure of working with Jackie Bowers, God rest his soul, Bobby Padgett, uh, Jimmy Tibbs. I've, I've you know, done the corner with Jimmy. And that you learn off of all these people. You learn. And they, you know, it's, it's a great thing to learn. And uh, I actually learned off of Waddy when I was with Waddy. You know, you learn things from different people and you take it on in your life. And it's a great you, thing. You don't, want to tell, you don't want to make that public because his head's big enough as it is, Tal. You don't want to make it public. You learn <laughs> nah, <enough. listen. laughs> We had a little bit of a fallout after the Akoli fight, and we yeah. shook hands at the Lopez fight. You was there, exactly. and you know, I've got a massive soft spot in my heart for him. I love him, like you know, he's a lovely kid, as I do Jose. You know, lovely yeah. kid. I spoke to Jose today. He's thinking about becoming a trainer, which I think would be good. Oh, he'd be a good trainer. He'd be a very yeah, good, good trainer. trainer. Yeah. So he just said, "I said, get this out of the way, and then get the ball rolling, and get your forms, and oh, get, he'd, get be, up. he'd be a brilliant trainer, Jose. Yeah. He's a very, very good trainer. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I'm really glad. I'm really glad. Yeah. So that was nice to know. You know. So he's still he's still staying retired then. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he's done. Yeah. 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 I, I think yeah. it's good call. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. Because the thing is, it the thing is with him, he had he had the thing with you working with him, and if he was going to go on to where he wanted to be, he had to beat Ian Martel, didn't he? And, and that's no disrespect, and no disrespect to him. No, no, and he had the beating of Ian Martell. He, he's a, you know, and there's no disrespect to Ian Martell or Graham Everett or their team. They've come and done a job, and you know, if they're watching this, you know, and f full credit to you fellas. But really, Jose Lopez should have outboxed. He should have boxed his head off, and yeah, he's got that ability. He, you know, got that ability, but he just didn't bring it to the ring. That's brilliant. Tell, thanks a lot for coming and joining us tonight. Appreciate the chat. It's I'm sure we're chatting, <laughs> we're chatting a few days privately anyway. So, yeah. well done, mate. And thanks a lot for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks for having Cheers, me. Mate. You just log off. God now. bless. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye. Bye. So, next, we're going to be speaking to uh, one of the two MCs that we use, which is uh, Mr. Mike Connolly. Now, Mike is somebody that's been working with us for a couple of years, and he is, in my opinion, one of the best MCs outside the ones that you see on TV. So let's talk to Mike. Uh, let's track down with Mike and see what he's been up to. Um, let's add him on and let's see if we can track Mike down. He's a man that does a fantastic job. Here he is, the man himself. How are you, Mike? Hello there. How's it going? Yeah, not bad. What are you? What have you been up to? You been up to anything, or you locked in? The same as everybody else, the same as the rest of the country, staying at home, doing a little bit of fitness, no more than an hour a day, trying to keep the kids entertained is the usual kind of stuff, Steve, unfortunately. Yeah, so so what do you do? I mean, we know you're an MC. Everybody sees you at your call um, doing our show. So what do you do outside? Obviously, MC does, doesn't pay you a, a full-time wage, but what do you what do you do outside that? Um, I work in business development. I unfortunately work for myself in, in aviation, which is not a great position to be in uh, at the moment. Things are going very, very slowly indeed, but we are, we're plodding through and we, uh, we know that we're going to, we'll be back at some point this year. So we're moving forward with that slowly but surely. Uh, and then like everybody else looking forward to getting back to the boxing, can't wait for the boxing to start again. Are you missing it? Oh, Man, yeah, very much so. Very, very much. 20, listen, 2019 was a massive year for for York Hall and Goodwin Boxing in particular, some huge shows. And this year started so 
at 100 miles an hour. It was really building up again. 2020 was going to be another massive year. Um, yeah, so it just kind of, we just stopped as the momentum started, but I think that will pick up again as soon as we're good to go. And I'll ask Terry this, the question, the same question to you. When do you think boxing will be back? Um, this might be slightly optimistic, but, it, but I think, uh, Terry thinks next year, I think closer towards the end of this year, I think September. Um, I, I think we're going to be in lockdown till June, going into July. But then I think we'll see a, a relaxing of you know, kids going back to school. Industry will start again. And I'm hoping September, October time will be um, live events will be starting again. It'd be great. It'd be, it'd be great if it does. I mean, because at the end of the day, I think we all need things to, you know, it's, it's, it's really weird, isn't it? Having Sky Sports on, there'd be no live sport from anywhere in the world. It's really, really difficult. So it really, it's, really, I've, I've never watched so much football from the mid 90s in, in my entire life that I've over the last, <laughs> the last, last three weeks. It's been crazy. But yeah, I'm looking forward to, to start again. It, it, you know, we had a massive 2019 was huge with some really memorable nights. I, I think we were blessed with possibly the small hole fight of the year last year. Uh, with uh, Liam Dillon and Yusef Kamu is just an amazing fight no, uh, for the English that. title. Um, gosh, so many things to remember. Uh, Justin Menzi, the speech he gave after his fight about his mum, was just affected everybody in York Hall that night, I think. Um, and then just working with good people. And, and my personal favourites, working with uh, people like Jamie Spate, uh, Lee Connolly, Lewis Van Poch, uh, Ibra Riaz, who's just, just retired, 190 fights. Yeah. Um, yeah. So some amazing people and, and the Goodwin team as well. We've been really blessed, I think, in 2019. And so what made you want to become an MC? Uh, well, it's a little bit cheesy, actually, but I, I've always been uh, involved in some way, shape or form in amateur boxing. I, I uh, volunteer at a club in my hometown in, in Bridlington. Um, and there was a fantastic guy who used to do all our MCing, a, a guy called Gary Gibson, who was just a, a local legend and a, and a really lovely bloke. Uh, and unfortunately, Gary got uh, very poorly and, and eventually passed away. I'd done some work in a former life in, in radio, uh, presenting. And, um, and, and our head coach, Damien, said, look, would you, would you MC for us? And I've not even thought about it and, and until then. And I uh, said, yeah, OK, a bit nervous, but I'll, but I'll give it a go. And um, that's it. As soon as I picked up the microphone, I, I had the bug. And, uh, and I was always thinking about doing my professional license from then. And what do you want out of it at the end? I mean, what, have you got aspirations to become a big TV uh, MC and that sort of stuff? Is that your end game? Is that what you hope to achieve at the end? I just, it, you said right at the start, and I think that's important to remember. There's, there's not a lot of money in, in boxing at, at uh, our level, at, you know, yeah. small hole boxing. Um, I, I live in, in Yorkshire. I'm based up here. So I, I travel down to London when, when we do the shows. Um, and I love it. And I really love it. And, and most important to me, the more important than anything else, is just carrying and enjoying it. And if I can enjoy it and opportunities come up, then, you know, if it works for me, then I'll, then I'll go for it. But I just want to keep enjoying it. And there is no better place in the world than MC Boxing, and I think, at the York Hall. It's fantastic. Yeah. Do, you do, do you do a lot of research before you go and do a show? Yeah, too much, probably. I, um, there's a little bit of an OCD there, but a bit of an obsession. I, I will research boxes and backgrounds and, and titles right through to the ABA stuff they've done. and oh, how many fights. Yeah, yeah, very much so. God, so, so there's a hell of a... See, by the time you get there, you know who the boxers are, what they've achieved yeah. and everything. You don't rely on picking think... that up. You don't rely on picking that up on the, on the night then. No, no, it, it, this, there are so many changes on the night itself with um, last minute replacements, uh, weight category changes, um, various issues. It, even boxers before the fight will come and tell you that they don't want to be known as something anymore. Can you call me? Dot, dot, dot. Um, so there's all kinds of things to deal with on the night itself. Sometimes we have sound problems, you know, things yeah. to we deal with at the time. So I normally take about 15, 16 pages of notes going into a night with me and then okay. can I use that if I need to. So you say you say you've got children. How old are your children? Uh, well, they are many and various. They are, so we've got 8, 12, 16 and 18. Jesus Christ. So you've got a big, big spread. The yeah, we had no television yet. Yeah, we were busy, 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 busy. <laughs> are you 18? You're still at home? Uh, he is, yeah, he is, to be fair. We have a, a, a little flat under our house. So he, he lives under there and, and stays out of the way. We just, oh, we just throw in some food every now and again. It's all good. <laughs> So yeah, so it's it's going to be difficult. I think we got 
we've got a few more weeks, haven't we, of being locked down. So it's important to try and get some boxing content out there for people that want to want to see what's yeah. going on. I think so. I'm looking at kind of launching my own podcast. I've got a new website to come. So yeah. I think I think the important message is whatever has been going on, there's an opportunity as well to kind of do a bit of self improvement. You know, work on some stuff and and look at what you can do while you've got a bit of downtime and try if you can to to enjoy it a little bit. No, I agree. So no, it's perfect. So Mike, thanks a lot for coming on. Really appreciate it. So my pleasure. Thank you very much. Always Steve. a pleasure. You take care, and I will speak to you soon, Mike. You too. Speak See soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. So next on we have somebody that was due to fight on Friday. Um, due to fight in Plymouth, Brad Pauls. Um, the bottom line, the bottom line with Brad is he must be feeling gutted. Um, but let's have a chat with uh, with young Brad and see where see how he's feeling today. Uh, I'm gonna try and drag him. I'll try and get him up. Is he there yet? Is he there? Not there yet. Uh, here we are. We're gonna get him. Let's see how Brad's feeling. Because he must be, I know he'd be gutted that the show at Plymouth didn't come. Here he hey. is, the, the man who shaved his head. Yeah, <laughs> I look like you, Steve. I know, well, you ever think yours is going to grow back? Mine's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I'm waiting for it to grow back. I'm not liking it. Oh, dear. So, how you fit, how you've been feeling this weekend, knowing where you would have been? A little bit gutted, really. Yeah, ruined everything, ruined all my plans. Um, yeah, having the best training camp of my whole entire life for nothing. Did all loads of the training, had four weeks left. Was doing pretty much the same as Linus and Sean in their camps. Same stuff on the track, same stuff in the gym. Ahead of schedule for no reason. So, yeah, it's horrible, mate. Absolutely horrible. I mean, if ever, if ever I thought of somebody that wasn't suited to being locked down, it's probably you. I, can't, one. <laughs> I can imagine like Linus sitting there chilling out, but... You, I just can't imagine sitting at home and doing nothing. I just can't see it. So I always say so. I just need a fight day. It's all I want. Just a fight day. I'm sweet. And then now, there's not even like one well, near the future. There's just a, nothing. But nothing no, to plan towards. Because generally, no, nobody knows. I mean, we've got a date obviously booked in Plymouth for October, and that might, you know, that that might be. Who knows? I mean, that's we still keep it, and hopefully that will yeah. take off. But uh, again, I th I can't see anything this side of September for sure and um yeah. but when then we've got to hope that October October may be optimistic but I think it's there's a chance but we need yeah. for you we need it to we need to crack on don't we it's gonna I be very you see, that's made that's made me feel better you say in October because I have some sort of time frame yeah but I think yeah. October's a realistic a realistic time scale I mean either one of two things will be happening in October will be the, the curve will be flattened and people will be going out or people will still be worried. And a lot of it's going to depend on the medicine, isn't it? And a lot of things yeah. that are going on there. Because you've got to get people who are going to be comfortable about going into an arena, haven't you, by that time? And Yeah. And it's a long time off. I mean, you can't, you know, six months away. See, so you've got to aim towards something. And in my head, we're sort of half aiming towards September, October, but yeah. accepting, accepting that it may not be. I mean, that's the only thing you can do. But I think... We should all prepare for September, October. I think that's yeah. really good. But not before. There's there's going to yeah. be nothing before then, I don't think. It's, but... all, it's all a bit of a guess, isn't it? You can't... There's nothing we... to go off what's going to happen. Well, we're, then... we're, all guided, we're all guided by the government, aren't we? So. Yeah. But you see some, um, some like, musicians and stuff are booking dates in October. See, like, like, uh, Noel Gallagher and stuff like this. So you get the vibe that people are expecting October to yeah. be more of a reasonable timeline. And again, the thing with boxing is the only thing about boxing that's different to concerts is the fact that you do need all the medical assistance there. So you'd need yeah. to you'd need to not have the cases. Be, you'd have to have the hospital fairly empty, people not getting it. So we'll, we'll just have to see. But it's it's very hard for you for, for all of you boxers yeah. out there not knowing what's coming next. What do you think about ticket sales? Say if it happens in October, do you think it's a lot harder or easier? Harder. Harder. So I'll say, I'll say it like some people are going to come out of this with loads of money. For Correct. Example, well, that's true. For example, my friend's a PE teacher, good money. And he's like, I can't spend any money. So I can't do it. There's no way I can spend it. So he's like, I've got loads of money here. So by the end of it, he's going to have shed loads of money and he's going to really want to go out. I'm not a young, I, people, I, don't think from, I think from the money perspective, 
Because I think what the government's done overall for people is enough. Because we're not spending money apart from bills. So for a lot, there's some people that have been missed out, for sure. But yeah. there's still a vast amount of people. But the issue that I have about ticket sales is, is basically if the virus is still around and people think by going to a boxing event they might catch yeah. it. That's yeah. really the bigger concern than the money, to be honest. I mean, the money's not great, but I think people will still be desperate to want to go out. But yeah. whether they will go to a, a packed arena like a boxing arena. But as you rightfully say, if Gallagher thinks a concert's going to happen. Yeah. If a concert's going to happen, then perhaps boxing's going to happen as well, you know? Yeah. It's hard, because it? anyone, say, who's like over 50, uh, anyone who's got asthma, anyone who's slightly vulnerable... That's them ticket sales that are not happening. I don't think they're putting themselves at risk. Now that you see more and more people die, they just go, right, I'm not going to chance it. You can't so, buy them. Can't yeah, buy so that's, a lot, that's a lot of your ticket sales. A lot of people have asthma. A lot of people over 50 or whatever else might have, might have wrong with them. So, yeah. yeah but what, but I, I've seen your, your support's more of the younger, isn't it more of the younger generation, your support? Yeah, yeah, more just, yes, yeah, it is my age range, but. You just don't know how it's going to affect everything, do you? But I, I hope I'd be all right. But you, you don't know, do you? But I think we've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to think in your head that October's going to happen again and, and you're going to be able to... Because we just need to crack on. So Because your career's gone really well, hasn't it? I mean, you're 14-0, and 0, nine yeah. KOs. Yeah. You're, you're, you're not far off moving on to TV platforms now, in my opinion. So yeah. it's just put a bit of a stop. A bit of a... No, block it's not. It. It's like we had such a good plan as well. Like, the timing... I know. It was all, still, Wait, hope, still, hopefully, we can still do the same thing with any luck. But you know, I think, you know, I think we're, let's just hope September, end of September, we can get back. So if we can get back end of September, you yeah. fight in October, then we'll be we'll be able to you know crack on again and yeah. just hope, just hope for the best. But again, the, the gyms have got to open first, haven't they? We've got to get the gyms open. You're going to need, and I, I and I'm worried about how how heavy are you now? Uh, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> guess, have a guess. I'll, I'm gonna hit. honestly, I think you'll be what 13 and a half stone. Do it in kilos, do it in kilos 85 kilos. Yeah, you're, you're bigger about that. <laughs> oh, <is> that... <laughs> thing is, I've been, I've been training, I've been training, there's just no reason to diet. But yeah, the other problem is you're bored. You're bored. So when you're yeah. bored, you're going to eat more. Everybody's got the same problem, haven't they? It's, yeah. it's really hard. It's really best, difficult. The best part of my day is my daily exercise. That's it. Best part. Highlight of the day every day. Going out for a run or something. So, uh, so you, are, you, are, you living, are you living with your partner at the moment? So it's just two of you living together? Yeah, yeah. Both of us in the flat. She's she's tied up in the cupboard. She's doing my head in. I was going to say, <laughs> you still in, are you still in love, Brad, or are you heading for separation? I don't know. I don't know. It's been tough. <laughs> I'll tell no, you what, it's, Brad, it's been all right. It's been all right. It's been all right. I'll tell you what, if you're a divorce lawyer, like, trust me, you're going to make a mint. Divorce lawyers are sitting there thinking, <laughs> I am going to make a fortune. There will be more divorces, trust me, <laughs> in the next 12 months than there's ever been. There'll be a rocket in them. I mean, I've, yeah. already, I've already had, I've already had one couple divorce, one couple want to separate my financial clients already. <laughs> <laughs> They've only been stuck together like three, four weeks. Jesus, it's difficult. And, they, and, yeah. a, and, they, and it's and and, the, and their separation is only because of this. They had no issues beforehand. It's just this. Yeah. They look the, at the each other and think the knock-on effect, Steve, is going to be crazy. I think the Divorces, world is gonna... murders, everything. <laughs> as long as you behave yourself, that's the main thing, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be fat. I'll just be fat, Steve. I'll stay out of trouble, but I'll just be fat. That's all I'm doing. So how long will you? I mean, what do you think? So if you were going to fight October, when would you? You'd need to be back in the gym in what? Beginning of July, realistically. Yeah, yeah. Um, July. Yeah, beginning of July. That's it. About twelve weeks. But I mean, I think I like... think that's really. I think it's realistic if they if they get a proper exit strategy. That you know, again, it depends on what they're trying to do. They can't close everything down forever. So if they're yeah. going to open things up, if they're going to let people do pop concerts, if, they, if they're going to let people go to football matches, they're going to have to let people go to boxing. But then it's just whether, as you rightfully say, the vulnerable people are going to probably say, yeah. unless, unless so, unless what, what's happening in, in Iceland, they've tested a lot of the population and they reckon that 50% of people are getting it and don't even know they've got it. So 
that's on their statistics, it means people out there have had it and don't even know they've had it. So yeah. let's hope that comes, because if that becomes true, then you are gonna, then it's, it's not gonna be too, it won't be too bad, hopefully, but we're just, yeah. we have to be, we have to be positive for all of this anyway, don't yeah. we? So, Here we go. What have you been up to, Steve? What have you been doing? My financial work. Is that been all, that's all you've been doing? All been, I've been doing 12 hour days doing that. I've been doing a lot of, <laughs> um, lot of stuff doing, um, doing a lot of people, helping people, what they're going to qualify for, what they're going to get, and stuff like that, and getting all their benefits sorted. So oh, it might need to help there, Steve. Right? Yeah, don't worry. You know, the I'll score. give you a call tomorrow or something. Yeah, give me a call. I'll tell you exactly what the score is. So, um, <laughs> so we've got, yeah, so we've got all of that to do. We've got client with, with investments. So I've been really busy. But the end of this week, it will be for me. It will be done there, and then it will just be little bits to do. So yeah. Next week's going to be a bit tougher for me because I'll have a lot. I'll have a lot less. To, when I'm working twelve hours a day, I'm happy. It's like you boxing and me working. I need to work. <laughs> yeah, but Perfect. I can't do any. Yeah. I can't do anything on boxing, can I? Because at the moment, yeah. we don't know anything. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. No, but Probably. but give me a shout. Listen, you, the thing is, I think I think they all things being well, we're gonna we're gonna be fighting for a British title in the next eighteen months. I think for sure. So Love. that's a, that's our plan and. Um, and let me tell you, anybody who gets in the ring with you better be prepared to go over. Yeah, there's a lot of frustration them. built up, Steve. Anybody you hit, mate, you hit them, they're going. <laughs> you know that. So yeah. they need to be very careful. And um, <laughs> did you see, by the way, out of interest, did you see that mad fight for your old title? That Sean Phillips against Davis Pagan. Did you see that fight? Uh, yeah, I seen one of the highlights. Where they, it, was a, it was over and around, about two yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was mad. Yeah. That was mad. Jesus. Good one for the future there, Steve. Maybe for the English or... Yeah, but, yeah, that has to be... Yeah, I mean, that that would be... Jesus, because I think that... that I mean, they, 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 they actually want to fight you. Because they, well, they yeah, actually, his, his, his dad messaged me. Yeah, I know. He's a nice, he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's a nice guy. He's like, yeah, look, in the future... Lovely people. Message. Lovely people. Yeah, just like me. Love a tear up. But Happen. for you, it's got to be right fight, right time. When it's yeah. worth something, he doesn't bring. I'm sure, if it's a good fight, he doesn't bring you anything. So the bottom line is, you're going to find somebody who offers you nothing. And yeah. you know, maybe when he gets up to the level, then you'll you'll have that, and it will be. But but if he came out like that against you, trust me, he'd be hitting the deck so fast. Yeah. <laughs> That's dangerous. It's, trust me, I, I, mean, love, I love fighters like that. It's perfect. Can you charge it? I mean, charging at you is not the one. So, but yeah. <laughs> be good. Listen, mate. Really good to speak to you tonight. But give me a shout tomorrow, and we'll, we'll chat about the other stuff. Legend, Steve. Appreciate it, mate. Stay safe, Thanks, buddy. Man. Take Nice care, mate. See you in a bit, boy. Bye, Bye, mate. So next on, we hopefully he's there. I'm going to try and track down Phil Williams, who, um, as everybody knows, is one of the toughest, toughest journeymen in the country. I'm trying to see if he's there. But he is out working with the ambulances. So the only issue with him is if he's if he's been out, called out on a call. Um because, uh, oh no, he's here, he's here. Let's grab him, great. Let's grab Phil, the main man. This is one tough man, this is Phil Williams. And if ever if he is for, he fights any heavyweight, any time, anywhere, any notice. Um, but I want no more. Here he is. How are you, Phil? How are you, old man? What are you up to? I just, I just come sat in the car, mate. I've always, all you hear is World War Three with the kids. <laughs> So what are you up to at the moment? What are you up to at the moment? You've gone because I know normally you box and you work as in security and stuff like that. Now you're working back yeah. on the ambulances. So what's going on? Yeah. So, so when I first debuted with you, I was working um, with the ambulance service full time. Then I kind of left there because the money was a bit poor. Yeah. Um, th throughout the boxing, I kind of put some money down, and I'm looking to fund now my student paramedics degree. Oh, brilliant! Um, which is like in paramedic science. Um, and then in the interim, working on a bank contract with the ambulance service, um, literally commenced that again a week before COVID-19 decided to come in and okay. hit us. Um, so I was in two minds whether to retreat and think, actually, maybe the wrong time, but if, if I'm not fighting in a ring, mate, we're going, we're going to fight this, this crazy so I, so world. You're, you're, are you picking up people that are ill and stuff like seriously ill at the moment? So. Yeah, yeah. So um, the role is a frontline emergency care assistant. So it, it's responding to 999 calls um, and obviously non-emergencies as well. So it's anything from um, 
you know, an elderly person that's gone and fallen over, that might have had a hip replacement, that's been stuck on the floor, um, to, you know, a, a cardiac arrest in, in, in progress. And have you got, have, um, you got, have you got this equipment? Have, have you got it? I mean, there's this big thing about PPE. Have you got it? The, the PPE is, is basic. Um, face masks, yeah, they are there. Gloves are there. Aprons are limited. Um, each each different specialist of the NHS, as you can probably guess, need different levels of equipment. Mm. Um, so, I mean, we're kind of, we don't need your astronaut suits as such. Um, but then I'm, I'm, I'm privy that there's some nurses that I know that are actually working on the COVID wards who actually are wearing like a full-on suit to the extreme where they're actually um, having to wear a nappy whilst at work. Because once they put that suit on, um, you know, to then go and get changed, the cross-contamination side of it. Oh, so that, of course. Yeah. There's it, 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 a lot going on. Um, I don't know, you know, probably one third of it, but, you know, you're just privy to conversations that you hear through speaking to people. Scary but, time. Yeah, I mean, um, Phil, you're, you're, you're a warrior. That's why you're out there now still doing it. I mean, top man. I mean, you deserve... I mean, because that's one thing, you're not scared of it. You just don't seem scared of anybody in the ring, anybody out there. And you're still... <laughs> You're still I don't know why. <laughs> to be honest, every single time, every single time that I'm in the changing rooms, warming up for a fight, you know, I'm thinking to myself, "Why do I keep doing this to myself?" Like, <laughs> it's called money. No, it's exactly. called money, Phil, isn't it? Yeah, the money. You can't go wrong with that. But actually, in the changing room, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a bit of a mare in the changing room. But you know, once we're out there, and that bow goes, it's just yeah, we're just do you, do you, used to do it. Get, do you get nervous? Before a fight, yeah, I do. I do get. There's been some fights where I've got really nervous, and some fights I've just probably, well, the majority of them actually, we've just gone in there, and not, not really cared at all. And um, I think they're the ones that you've got to be a little bit. If you're not nervous, there's usually something to worry about. Yeah. So let me ask Chris, the who's, who's the best fight. fighter you fought? Um. You no, know it's, it's a tough question. I think I think from a work rate point of view and me in there thinking come on mate give me a break had to be Fabio <laughs> it yeah. really did because um you know he's a, he's a very very tough kid great lad um but I think you know I wasn't prepped for that fight I think we got the call on Tuesday yeah I'd, I'd almost started Christmas I think when you rung me I was drinking drinking a Guinness at the time and so <laughs> like <laughs> you want to fight Saturday yeah why not you know let's go and have it but I think yeah, I think I think Fabio is, you know, one where I've kind of thought, you know, come on, mate, give me a break. Yeah, he was really... You know, some point you're in there, and you're not bothered. You're just like, is that all you got? And I think, I think with him and, and the big stage show, I think got to me a little bit as well. And obviously, yeah. you want to try, you want you want to perform well because you then want to get a call up again for that type of show. So you don't want to be a complete letdown as such. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think I think that was the toughest toughest odds I'd, I'd say where I thought. Yeah. Who, who's, who's hit you the hardest? Um, I know you're asking. <laughs> so when, so when somebody you... hit you, you thought, Jesus Christ, that's really... When, who's walked you to your boots with one punch? I'm just trying to think. I'm honestly trying to think because... Would well, you not feel anybody's ever done that? No, I don't, I, don't, I don't blow my own trumpet, but there's no one that I've got in there with in my whole career where I've got out there and thought, thank God that's over. Oh, really? You know, that's or, interesting. No, my, Joe does my corner, Joe Rona. He, yeah. um, when me and Pilato had it out in the second fight, we yeah. both, you know, I went for him and he, <laughs> and I got clipped in the mix of, you know, trying to go. And Joe seemed to think, he goes, he goes you got buzzed up in there, didn't you? I goes, what, when, what round? <laughs> he goes in that third round. He said, "He said you look like you got busted." I'm like, oh, I don't remember that. <laughs> well, I mean, on that second fight, I think you gave him plenty that he could definitely a load that he could he could handle in that fight for sure. Yeah, yeah. The first the first fight, I was quite it was quite new to me still. Yeah. It wasn't too long after I boxed in my debut. I don't think, and I knew it was another one of yeah. I knew it was another one of Don's guys who were really well seasoned as well. Um, but I think I think the first time I boxed him, the nerves the nerves just got to me. Apparently, was a good amateur, um, so I got a little bit nervous, and I think I just allowed him to just dictate that fight. Whereas the second one, when I had um, oh, what was the chap's name? We sold the whole venue out. 
Who's that? The Albanian. The Albanian. Like... Oh, the Florian. Yeah, the Florian. Florian. Marku, yeah. Marku. All of a sudden, I had the whole of your call, you know, rooting for me as an away fighter. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know, I don't throw an uppercut, landed in flush, and it's like, that was brilliant. It was really the most enjoyable fight I've had, I oh, think. Was that it? Well. I was going to ask you that. That's the most enjoyable <laughs> one, is it? Yeah, it was just, you don't get the support in the away. Well, when you're at home, you do. As yeah. you know, I box at home from yeah. time to time. But you don't get that support. Sometimes you, you do get your away fans. You get the guys that come and they root specifically for the guys that are on the road, which is good. And, you know, those people, you know, great people, because, you know, we need that little bit of support. It's, it's yeah. not, you know, you get 700 fans roaring for your opponent to take your head off and you get maybe five fans that will clap for you yeah. every yeah. fight. So how many, um, so many, you said you, you, you said you're out in the car because of all the noise. How many kids have you got in there, in the house with you? There's there three kids. Uh, one's fine. He's upstairs. He'd be playing his PS4 since school's closed down. Um, and then I've got a seven-year-old and a three-year-old, which they can be good as goal, but then, you know, sods law will have it. When they decide to have a little ruck, which they do from time to time, it's just, yeah, it's carnage. Sure. <laughs> well, listen, Phil, listen, will you... you Boxing wouldn't exist without you, that's for sure. And I'm sure there's going to be some more heavyweight fights that we can we can get. And obviously, it's all about getting you this money, getting you this degree, and becoming that's, yeah, that's really yeah. really good news. I'm really delighted to hear that you're doing something. Good yeah, it's it's great. Awesome. We, had a, we had a really good start to 2020 as well with the fights. I think we got no. five in, didn't we? And good money. Sure, we have five fights. And good we money. Five in 20? Yeah, well, yeah, they good were. money for some of them as well. So it was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think we only lost out, unfortunately, because of this COVID thing. I think we only lost out on um, that one in Bolton and obviously Harry. That was yeah. supposed to be Friday, wasn't it? Just gone. The only thing is those fights will still be there because what will happen is you'll exactly. just have more fights because those guys will still want to box you. So they'll, those yeah, fights will yeah. still come back. So you'll just get more yeah. fights over the 12 months when you get back. That's all. So Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's still all good. Phil, thanks a lot, mate, for coming no, on. No, appreciate it, Steve. You look after really yourself and the family it, as well and keep safe doing yeah. your ambulance work. You do. Say love to all the family, mate. Thank you. Take care, and Phil. Catch up, See you, mate. Cheers, Steve. Bye. Take care, mate. Bye. Bye-bye.